Hi, this is Alyssa Maxwell doing the prospectus presentation for research mm. it's been a day. Research methods. Okay. Um, so my prospectus focuses on the foundations of the National FFA organization's IDE work. So their inclusion, diversity, and equity work, continual work through the organization. So the centrality of this study that um, I would conduct if I had a purpose of doing research um, would be the growing diversity, especially in higher education. So a lot of FFA members go into higher education as well as they are in school. So the inner um, it affects them that way. Then also the cultural changes in our nation and worldwide and the, the society perceptions of inclusion, diversity, diversity and equity within everything our nation does. Politics, schools, organizations, media, everything is has a spotlight on anything to do with inclusion, diversity and equity. So some previous research, um, the National Office actually surveyed 197 agriculture education professionals on how they felt that the FFA was doing with their ID work so far. Um, so 27% of them members are set or the agriculture professionals say that the National FFA members are reflective of the diverse student population in the broader community. 47% agree that the national FFA programs and services are adapted to take into account the values, norms, and issues of the diverse population. So as the population changes, organizations should change too. So that FFA is working really hard to make sure that everyone feels included and that um, diversity is encouraged and that equality is supported. Um, other stuff is 46% of the agriculture education professionals think that National FFA has allocated appropriate resources dedicated to um, an outreach strategies for the diverse students populations. And they also, 46% also believe that the National FFA provides an environment for the free and open expression of ideas, opinions, and beliefs. Next, um, other previous research the National FFA has offered on their website under um, the Ag Ed for All movement, which is what FFA has or classifies all their ID work in, is the Ag Ed for All. Um, so they just talk about how employees want their companies more diverse and that job seekers would like a more diverse environment to work in and how millennials are more actively engaged when they believe their company fosters an inclusive culture. Also, um, 10 years millennials will comprise of 75% of the workforce. As, and then it goes on to more statistics of the FFA and membership. So 66% of FFA members are Caucasian, 46 of those being female, 65% of them of agriculture teachers are Caucasian. Um, and 87% of new ag teachers or ag graduates, ag, ag graduates are Caucasian with 74% of them being female. So back to that slide. Um, so that's changing from the past, from the original um, foundations of FFA, what founded FFA. So everything is continuously changing. Some previous knowledge of IDE and work with FFA um, would be that media spotlights of the inclusion, diversity, and equity as um, all these things are happening with our, within our nations and um, it is highlighted amongst education and politics and whatever else you can highlight stuff on. Um, the introduction to the, this study would be the push for IDE is at a all-time high just because of everything that's happening. Don't think I have to go into details, but the National FFA has the program. Ag Ed for All is what I um, stated earlier. So my main question 
for the study is going to be what serves as the foundations for the National FFA organization's continual work in inclusion, diversity, and equity. So some review of the literature I talked about um, some challenges, some challenges that um, face when you are trying to implement the IDE. So it would be like some workshops are seen as completely um, contraceptive or um, just not working because the ideas of the application and the definitions of the words are combined in a way that will anyway it turns it around where employees or the attendees of the workshops aren't um, perceiving the right information and turn around and um, apply what they've learned in the wrong ways. Um, next would be um, diversity in STEM related fields. So within agriculture education is a lot of hands-on, a lot of STEM work. Um, so diversity in this um, field is growing in higher education, in schools, as you see all these career academies opening up, especially in Georgia. Um, so this talks about like how in science there are more diverse there's more females now more people of color and so as these people are coming in they're they're the programs are being inclusive but not supporting the people that are coming in they're not changing what they're doing they're just allowing these people to come in and not adapting to what needs to happen to make them successful um, as well as the diversity growth in higher education. There's a need for more inclusive support. So this is related back to the STEM related field as well. Um, there's been a massive expansion in diversity within higher education because of government um, policies have made initiative to have more inclusion in the school environment. So this is allowing more people to go to college essentially. And so the programs and the schools aren't changing what they're doing because previous to this there's been a lot of higher educated people so they don't need as much support or the same kind of support as the people the, the new students that are coming in that are being included in the environment they're coming in but they're they don't have that support that should be there um, through the changes that schools are making making Another thing is that um, IDE in public education rather than just IDE. Um, so as views and perceptions are changing within our population, as populations are changing within the school, it needs to the school needs to reflect what the population of the students is. So a lot of schools are having battle and having conflicts from whose views should be taught to the students so historically religiously etc etc and so that would be um, an issue within ID in the school but then it's also is being influenced more with there's been a lot about gender identity and things like that and then onto the national FFA I uh, stated a lot of that um, research previously so I won't go into detail about that Next, we have methodology. So, a little backstory. I have no idea what I'm doing, so I hope this is right. Um, this is something that has um, honestly never interested me, as it's just not something that I'm good at, so I'm not motivated to be good at it. But reading about it this semester and learning about it, um, just seeing the processes behind what these scientists are doing as well as all these college students and college professors and whoever else does research is doing is a lot of hard work and I really do I give it to them give it to them because it's something I do not want to do so I'm glad they do it for me but anyways so obviously I'm going the qualitative route and I want to focus on focus groups I think I hope that's the right uh, method but I think I would start off with a questionnaire so it'd be like a ranking kind of like a needs assessment but a needs assessment for me to figure out how the people or the focus group is 
interested and included in the process of the Ag Ed for All programs that are there uh, for National FFA. Oh, the focus group is going to, going to consist of the entire National FFA Board of Directors and the entire National FFA staff, including the National FFA officers at the time. Because I chose those participants as they are the people making the decisions and finding the sources and the reasoning behind what the National FFA is doing within their agricultural education for all movement initiative, whatever you call it. So after the questionnaire, they would write um, statements from strongly disagree to strongly agree, talking about um, their involvement, their interest, um, what they think National FFA is doing. Pretty much just trying to get a read on um, how much they actually know and how much they are invested into it. So after that data has been collected and reviewed and grouped into common categories, um, an interview will take place based on the interest and the inclusion that the focus group is. So the more the higher included and interested people will will have the interviews um, so, so you could find the resources and the reasons behind it because they would be the main source of these. So I think I would do the text analysis because I would um, be inscribing the interviews. So then I would want to get um, common wording together and that would be my data that I would look at. I hope I used the right terms. Anyways, moving on. Um, and these are my references. Thanks. <laughs>